Hello, here we are. Today I'm going to be recording another 24-hour reading vlog to try and fall back in love with reading. I did this maybe a month ago, a month and a week ago or something. And on that one I managed to read for 5 hours and 47 minutes. So let's see if in the period of the next 24 hours if I can beat this record or not. It's currently 6.10 p.m. so I'm going to be reading all the way from now until 6.10 p.m. tomorrow and every time I read I turn on the stopwatch on my phone and we add all that and let's see if we beat the 6 hours 47. For this reading vlog, however, instead of just choosing random titles from my TBR that is endless, I'm going to be focused on thrillers. There's kind of a rule to this and it's something that I did with the previous book that I read. I didn't do for any vlogs or anything, I was just reading it. I am in a major reading slump for like since October last year, so it's been six months, more probably, and I don't know, I feel like I need to find a book that will give me that passion for reading. And back in the days that used to be thrillers. So I'm going to be reading thrillers for this vlog, but with the rule that if they are not captivating, even if there's nothing wrong with them, but they're just eh, average, and I know that I'm gonna end up giving it a three, maybe a three and a half, four stars, but it's not gonna be a five stars because I'm not loving it, then I'm just gonna DNF the book and move on to the next thriller. And hopefully by the end of these 24 hours I'll be able to find an amazing thriller. The first one that I'm gonna start on is one that got amazing reviews last year. Everyone read this. It's The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. It's one of those big floppy paperbacks, so I'm inspired for it. What do I know about this? Nothing. But I'm gonna start reading it and I'll let you know how I get on and if this is anything interesting or not. Also, did I choose this one specifically because I have my nails black and it matches the cover? Potentially. Present this unabridged recording of The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Read by Chopay Dorisso, Sophia Zervudachi, Charlie Anson, Claire Corbett, Daphne Kumar, and Julia Winwood. <laughs> read for 41 minutes and 27 seconds. It's very interesting. I was making some notes. I have my pen there. That's where I'm currently going. The chapters have um, the characters' names, so they don't have numbers, but I'm going on to page 56. And the reason why I started doing notes is because we are following quite a lot of characters and my memory absolutely sucks. I never remember who's anyone. So on the first page of the book, I've been writing who is each person, mostly where they live on the apartment. There's one apartment per floor. So I've been putting down their name and which floor they live at. And if there's anything special about them, then I'm also writing that down, but I'm not taking exhaustive notes, just basically who each person is. Just so along the book, if someone goes like, oh, John said this, I can go back and see who John is. Anyway, I was getting a little bit sleepy, which is the usual. So I'm gonna go put my dinner in the oven. It's gonna take a while to cook and then probably go on my phone for a little bit just to wake up and then resume reading. It's 11 p.m. and I haven't picked up the book back up since dinner. I ended up watching a movie and then I had all intentions of watching the movie just while I was having dinner, but then, you know, it was good. So I remained. It was that new Netflix movie that is on the top five or ten or something, at least here. Fall or The Fall. And it's about two girls climbing a very high tower. And oh my god, it's not for the faint of heart. And oh, I think I'm gonna have nightmares for a week. Anyway, now that I have some light, let's pick this back up. I also have a mug with some ice cream. I'm loving the floppiness of this book. It's so good! I'm finally in bed after showering, washing my hair, and just having a chill time. I'm here with little Miku, who is keeping me company. And now let's get some more reading done before sleeping. Right now I'm feeling wide awake. Hopefully it's not gonna last too long because it's half two in the morning and I don't wanna sleep too late. But at the same time I wanna get a good going in the book. So 
I'm a bit undecided if I want to remain wide awake or if I would rather drift off, drift off to sleep. But I'm going on to page 93. I've been doing my notes. I'm enjoying this note-taking thing. Usually I'm not like that, I don't take notes. And it's not like I'm trying to figure out the mystery, but I'm writing comments like, oh my god, no, he didn't. And I wonder what he's hiding. I wonder what he knows. Things like that. I never told you what this story is about. Do you even care? But basically, it's this big apartment. It has five stories. Each floor is only one apartment. I already mentioned that. And we are following a bunch of different POVs from the people on the different floors. But I would say that the main character is Jess, who is Ben's sister, half-sister. So Jess came from London to visit his brother last minute. She's running away from something, we don't know what, but she mentioned that she was running away from something. So she took the train from London to Paris. She informed Ben last minute that she was gonna come and stay with him. They are not very close, but apparently they are there for each other when they need it. Anyway, she gets to the apartment and Ben is nowhere to be seen. He doesn't answer the door. Eventually she manages to get in. And basically now she's just inside the apartment and she's looking for clues on what could have happened to Ben. And along the way, we're also following some POVs of the other residents of the building. That's as far as we've got. It's interesting. There's a good mystery because obviously he was talking to her a few hours prior. So I wonder what happened to him. Let's keep reading and I'll update you later on. It's quarter past 3 a.m. <sighs> I was getting really sleepy on this last chapter. Things are getting intense and I didn't have the mental capacity to stay focused on the story. So I'm gonna stop for now. I'm going on to page 150, which is roughly 40% of the book. I'm enjoying. I think I need to reread this last chapter tomorrow though, because at some point I think I closed my eyes. <laughs> my total for today is two hours and 17 minutes. Not bad. Let's get to sleep and we'll pick this party back up tomorrow. And in case you are wondering, yes, Miku is still sprawled on the bed there. Good morning, it's just past 10 a.m. I woke up super early, already been downstairs, had breakfast. Well, first breakfast at least. And I put the dogs in the garden and now they're both here with me. I was thinking I'm just gonna read for a bit. I know I will eventually want to nap. So I decided why would I even get out of bed if I want to nap? Because, you know, I only slept for like six hours and a bit. So I'm gonna read until I get tired, then close the blind again and sleep for another couple of hours before we proper start the day. Let's do it. getting super sleepy so I'm gonna have a nap. I made it to page 208 and my time at the moment is 3 hours and 19 minutes which is very impressive in my opinion and I've passed the halfway point on the book as well. It's getting very interesting. We're still following the same mystery trying to find out what happened to her brother but now we found out some relations here between the characters which are spicing it up in general, it's a very slow-paced book. I feel like this exact same story could have been told with a few less pages and just go more to the point. But I guess that this way kind of builds up the suspense and makes you want to continue reading. I'm gonna have a quick nap, just a couple of hours, and I'll speak to you later. Welcome to my kitchen cupboard chronicles. <laughs> if you've been following me for a while, and I mean a while, you might remember back on my other old house, so over two years ago, there was a time in my life, I cannot pinpoint exactly when, where I was obsessed with acai bowls and I used to make them at home. Fast forward two years, I haven't had one acai bowl at home in ages because there's only one supermarket in the UK, as far as I'm aware and I've done my research, that sells the frozen acai packs. You can buy like acai powder and things I've never tried, but the frozen acai packs that I've used to use, there's only one supermarket and it's not even a physical supermarket, it's one of those that delivers groceries at home, but it's also one of the most expensive ones. I used to use them for the longest time, I used to use them and then I moved to using other supermarkets. They were cheaper to try and save a little bit on the groceries. So that was long story short, but I've been wanting to have acai bowls, especially since I went back to Singapore and I discovered there was that cafe where, oh my god, I loved it so much and the last time I was there they didn't have it. I mean, the acai bowl place was closed 
<sighs> sad. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So the other day I decided, you know what, I'm gonna order groceries from that supermarket just so I can get a bunch of acai packs in the freezer. And so I did. Here it is. This is the brand that I use in case someone's curious. I don't know if it exists in other countries. If not, each of these packs has four packs inside and you use two at a time and I got four of these bags. So my freezer is quite stocked. Two of these per bowl. You need a blender. I'm gonna use my thermal mix. I'm gonna use half of this very ripe banana. After the first blend, this is what it looks like. It's quite dark in here. Hey Google, turn on the cabinet. Blend it again. There we go. Instead of banana, you can use obviously any fruit that you want that it's not frozen. Smooth it out a little bit. So we have surface to put the toppings. Mm, I forgot how good it was. I'm gonna be quite basic and I'm gonna use strawberries and banana on today's one. And I'm gonna add some granola, this is the one I'm using. Back in the day, I used to use a different one. And then la pièce de résistance, maple syrup. You can also use honey or any sort of other spreadable. Or you can completely leave this out. Cinnamon on top. And there you go, let me show you properly. This is what it looks like. Yum! I had my acai bowl, which was awesome! Oh my god, I was so happy eating it. I thought at some point that I was gonna start crying. I was listening to the audiobook while eating. This is where I'm at, past halfway. I think I'll be able to finish this today, but before we proceed, I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a quick unboxing. I got two parcels from Waterstones and I don't know if all the books I ordered are here. I think I ordered seven books. Then this one arrived a few days ago and then I got this one the next day. And I've been waiting a few days to see if anything else would show up. Nothing has, so I'm gonna assume that everything is here because everything has been dispatched. I haven't bought books in months because I've been in this weird reading slump. It's like I don't even like books anymore, so I haven't been reading, but I also haven't been feeling the desire to buy them. And then I've been trying to do these reading vlogs and trying to discover my passion for it. And I thought maybe what I'm missing is actually buying some books as well. So here we are, Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. So some of these books, I don't exactly remember the list that I got, but some of them I got because I'm curious about them and I want to read them because they're authors I love or something. And some others, like this one, is because Literally everyone's reading them and I decided to jump on a train and I was even thinking about doing a reading vlog of me reading these very popular books and seeing if I agree with the hype. But like, do I know what this is about? Absolutely not. I hope it's not a young adult, but I didn't even check. I think it's a trilogy or a series, but like the covers are all very pretty. There's a purple one and a pink one, I think. I think that's the first one. Anyway, let's see what's on this one. The box is a bit open, but I want to tear it away. I'm going to open it on the side. Anyway. There's four books in here, but that one is five, so I'm not, I haven't received them all yet. Never Never by Colin Hoover and Terry Fisher. I don't know if this book is new or if it's a backlist. Out of the sudden, I just started seeing this everywhere online. It's from 2017, so I don't know why out of nowhere it started being popular, but it's one of those that I got to get on the hype. Aha! I forgot I got this one and I got the hardcover because the paperback hasn't been released in the UK yet. So this is The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson, which is the sequel to The Kind Worth Killing, which was either the first or the second thriller I've ever read a bunch of years ago, and I loved it. I remember nothing about it, I just remember thinking it had a lot of plot twists and that I was loving it. And this year, this is brand new, Peter Swanton decided to re release this. I think it's a sequel, I don't think it's a prequel. I think it's an actual sequel. But I don't know what it's about, anything but people have been giving this good reviews and saying it's an actual good Peter Swanson book. Another one that everyone's been talking about. Twisted Love by Hannah Hyung Hyung. I think this is a series, yeah, it says here at the back. So there's Twisted Games and Twisted Hate as well. And I think this is a romance, but like a smut romance, which is definitely not my kind of book, but I thought I'd give it a try again for the reading vlog of reading what everyone's reading but also reading something out of my comfort zone. I haven't entirely decided what I want to do with that one. And then, did I order this one? Oh, I think so. I think this was the last one I added. 
So this is Meet Me in Another Life by Catriona Silvi. And this I had never heard about it until I was scrolling through the Waterstones website. And I was looking at sci-fi. Because again, I was thinking maybe what I'm missing is actually reading something. Then, how do I explain it? It's a bit out of my comfort zone, but at the same time I have evidence that I've liked it in the past. And sci-fi, I've never really read it, but there is a few sci-fi books that I love, like Project Hail Mary, Illumini, and there was a Brandon Sanderson that was set in space as well. And all of those things are space-related and they're sci-fi. So then I was thinking, maybe what I need is to read more sci-fi and explore different dimensions of sci-fi. So I saw this one and this is about like a couple that keeps meeting through time, like through the years, but they don't really remember each other, I think, but they meet again and again and again, and it's like they're meant to be in this weird dimension. And these are the first books that I bought in months. How exciting is that? Let me know if you are curious about either of the reading vlogs that I mentioned, either reading what everyone's reading and seeing if I like and agree with the hype, or reading books from genres that I usually don't. So that would include sci-fi, maybe fantasy, maybe a non-fiction, the smut romance would, could also be included in there. If I tell you how long I've been sitting here in this exact spot, on the sofa, on my phone, instead of reading, you're gonna judge me. But it's been like three hours, maybe four. <laughs> I've expired the 24 hour period of this vlog. However, my vlog, my rules. So I decided that I'm going to take the 24 hour period loosely and I'm gonna continue reading this book and I need to finish it today. I don't know if I'm setting myself to fail because it's not like I only have like 50 pages left, right? I have this entire chunk to go, which is quite a lot. It's a lot, but I really wanna finish this book and I know I can do it. If I just focus and do it, I know I can. So right now, I'm gonna put my dinner warming up from yesterday. I have leftovers. It's my favorite meal is leftovers. <laughs> so while that is doing, I'm gonna sit here and read and then I'm gonna eat. And I wanna say that I'm not gonna watch TV while I eat, but like, it's not really practical to be reading and having dinner at the same time. If it's just a snack, sure, but if it's an actual meal, no. And I also don't wanna like sit here, stare into the abyss, eat and just focus on the audiobook because that's really weird. <laughs> So I'll probably watch something on the TV. I'll do my best to not be as bad as yesterday, not sit here for two hours watching an entire movie. Told me how talented I was. But later, when I sent him the paintings I had made of him, he took me aside and told me they weren't appropriate. Even though I worked so hard on them, I'm getting the proportions right, the tone, just like he taught us. I'm pausing for dinner. Here's my lasagna in the air fryer, I haven't tried it yet. This is where I'm going. Page 238 and my current time, three hours and 50 minutes. It's still way less than last time, but still better than the normal average day for Manganette. I am the absolute worst. This reading vlog, why am I like this? So I've sat on the sofa. I've watched an entire movie for dinner. I'll do my best to not be as bad as yesterday, not sit here for two hours watching an entire movie. And then I just remained on the sofa watching TV, but it's not like, I even had anything to watch. I was literally scrolling through Netflix, trying to find something to watch. Why am I like that? And I was also just on my phone for hours, talking to people, fair enough. It's not like I was scrolling through Instagram, even though every now and then between texts, I would scroll on Instagram. Why am I like this? It's 2 a.m., people, and I still have probably like two hours of reading to do. And because technically the reading vlog already finished, I can already feel my motivation to finish the book disappearing and me considering, should I just DNF it? Am I that interested in the story? <laughs> the story is actually very interesting and I'm actually curious to know what's happening. So I'm taking the executive decision to continuing this vlog for tonight and possibly half of tomorrow or so, just so I can finish the book in here because otherwise it's not gonna happen. Ask me if I read anything in bed last night. I didn't. Anyway, I am determined to finish the book today. I just came downstairs to the sofa, I'm wrapping myself in a blanket, and I have my acai bowl. I did exactly the same as yesterday, acai, strawberry, banana, and granola. And I'm gonna do the same that I did yesterday, which is eat the acai bowl and stare into the abyss while listening to the audiobook. But it's fine, because the acai bowl brings me so much joy that I actually don't mind not watching anything on the TV and just enjoying the moment. <laughs> I'm 
almost done with the book. I'm at five hours, two minutes, and I only have a tiny bit left. And I could just sit here and finish it in one go. But there is a couple of things that I need to take care of around the house and I need some light for it. So before it gets dark, because it's getting quite late, I'm going to do those things and also finally get out of my pajamas because I've been in them for hours. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to sit back down and finish the book and I'll update you when I do. Hi, it's the next day and I'm here just to let you know that I did finish the book last night, but it was very, very late, so I didn't record an update. But... <sighs> what a disappointment! I feel like the book went from being great to being good to being bad. Not bad, but weird. I was reading reviews on Goodreads and everyone's talking about how like the ending was unpredictable. Yes, because it was so out of the blue and so stupid. <laughs> anyway, I don't like it. And for the majority of the book, I was considering giving it four stars, but now I've reduced it to three just because it's so silly and like, ah. Oh. I'm so disappointed. It's mostly that the book is so long for what it is. It's not even that the story is that bad. Like the mystery is interesting and I was having fun. But to reach the conclusion that we did, we could have done that with easily a hundred pages left. Just saying. Anyway, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.